Okay, so we're currently recording level engine here with a deck list that's featuring some of the new horse cards that are set to come out in Age of Overlord that should be releasing in the TCG in October. I mean, I'm pretty sure they currently have it out in the OCG. I think that came out like two weeks ago. So these have nothing to do with the original horse, the Black Plate and Dragon monsters in their playstyle. They revolve around mainly this continuous spell and this continuous strap. Pharaonic Sarcophagus and Canopic Protector, respectively. So ideally you want to get this out as soon as possible. Because any of these new horse monsters, if they're in your graveyard and you control the Sarcophagus, you can just summon each of them out for free. Granted, each of them, you can only summon them once per turn from the graveyard this way. But still. Ideally you want to just, again, play this as soon as possible. And I have three of the... If I'm pronouncing it right, I'm I have three of this level 8, who can discard itself and another card from your hand to the graveyard. Actually, no, correction, it's sent from hand to the graveyard, it's not discard. So you go down two cards to add a Pharaonic Sarcophagus from deck to hand, then draw one card, so... Actually, I think you stay, like, hand neutral if this does resolve. Though you're having to send two cards from your hand to graveyard as costs, so if your opponent plays Ash Blossom against this, then they just two for one you. <laughs> and that's definitely not something you want to have happen to you. So for now, I settled on three of Imseti. Two of this one, who just can gain a lot of attack and defense, especially if you just pile on horse monsters on the field. Well, first things first, these all also have abilities that just trigger when. A car another card leaves your field by opponent's card effect. For this one, you can send one card on the field to the graveyard. This doesn't destroy, this doesn't target. So yeah, pretty versatile form of removal. <laughs> and then Duomatef. If another card you control leaves the field from an opponent's card effect, you can draw cards equal to the number of monsters with different names in your main monster zone. Which, that could easily be like a lot of cards. Let's just say if your opponent doesn't get rid of this, they get rid of another of your monsters, and you still have, like, a lot of monsters on board. You can just easily refleet your hand with this, potentially. Three of Hapy Vanguard of Horus, who again can just revive himself in the graveyard for free if you have the Sarcophagus out. With another card, you control these the field by an opponent's card effect while you control this monster. You can target two cards that are banished and or in either graveyard. Either add both to the hand or shuffle both into the deck. One thing to note here, that it specifies, it doesn't actually specify any specific, specific criteria for these banished cards. So, this, I assume, should be able to recover face-down banished cards as well. And then I guess, just so I have, like, at least one of each of the four different horse names that are coming out of Agoth in October. So at least I have, like, four different names. I mean, I guess this effect is okay. I like the other three effects a much better, especially this one to just let you search into Sarcophagus and you just have to hope it doesn't get negated because you're going down, like, two cards for nothing if it does. So, fun fact, this was built off of my Gren Maju 8-axis deck list. This was originally, like, a rank 8 Gren Maju deck, and now... For all we know, I might just make it into this if I'm really satisfied with the Horus cards. And if they're not, like, too expensive when they come over in the TCG. And as for the Spice, that I think Yish I think Yishan was the one who just popularized the Deep Sea Diva and 8 Axis Gren Maju. Playing this just to go into some generically good level 10 synchros. I've never played this one, but also maybe worth a try playing Ice Chai Chimir Ejirin. One Water Tuner, which you'll have in Deep Sea Diva, and then just one of your many level 8s, you can just go into this if for some reason you need to. Can activate this effect, face up monsters you can control, cannot be destroyed or banished by your opponent's card effects this turn. If you activate this effect in response to an opponent's card or effect activation, and your opponent has a card with that name on their field, 
or in the graveyard. Keep in mind that the card that you activate this effect in response to, it can be like any card or effect activation. It doesn't have to specifically be a card or effect activation that would destroy or banish your cards. You can just activate this effect in response to like anything your opponent does. It won't negate the effect, it'll just get the card off the field. Well, it could just outright stop the effect entirely if that card needs to still be on the field for it to resolve properly. And if this card's in your graveyard, and if a card is banished your by your opponent's card effect, you can just revive this for free. I've been kind of running out of space to just keep all of the old, like, Grunmachu 8-axis cards in. So I bump down Gizmek Orochi to 2. Still another level 8 that's easy to summon, and... Banishing cards face down. Well, I guess it synergizes with Changying still, but Grand Maju. Yeah, you'll notice like that Grand Maju is not nowhere to be seen. There, there's been a death. You can banish eight cards from the top of your deck face down to just summon this from your hand or graveyard. So again, if this hits your graveyard, that's good because you can still summon it from your graveyard anyway. So I'll get into the spells later. Yeah, one thing to note is while I decide to keep the dangers in this deck list for now, three of Bigfoot and three of Thunderbird, yeah, you'll have to keep in mind that Imseti and the Sarcophagus send from hand to graveyard for cost, which is not the same as discarding. So if you send Bigfoot off of this or this to pay a cost, then you're not going to get the discard trigger. Same for Thunderbird. But I figured these are still here to synergize with one of the spells I still run at 3, that being traded in, and also, let's just say, if you reveal Bigfoot. And they just discard one of your Horus monsters, who can just summon itself back out from the graveyard for free anyways if you have the Sarcophagus. Then you're just definitely getting some nice value there. You're summoning a monster, you're drawing a card, and the card you lost from your hand you didn't really lose it, you could just revive it with the Sarcophagus anyways, if it's one of the Horus monsters. Granted, this does rely on random chance to some extent, so... I don't know. I'm gonna keep these at three each. Yeah, these Alphas and these Kaijus are still a holdover from the going second Grand Macho TK deck lists. Basically, just... Premium removal, granted they can only just deal with one monster at a time, but there's just almost like no like protecting like any specific monster from being like tributed away by a kaiju. It's almost just guaranteed that if your opponent summons like one really scary boss monster, like it's going to at least get replaced by a kaiju. And then Alpha's just easy to summon stuff. And also a level 8, and can just bounce your opponent's monsters back, remove your opponent's monsters, or just put the kaijus back in your hand so you can just summon them again to your opponent's field, that too. So as for the spells, we have three trade in. Synergizes extremely well with just about all the level 8s in the deck. These can summon themselves from the graveyard easily. These have effects that go off when they're discarded. So you can also turn your trade in into like a removal against a face-up card with Bigfoot, or if you have Thunderbird, you can also turn trade in into a removal against any set card. Two pod desires, though I'm speculating maybe I'd want to replace these in the future deck list with Pot of Prosperity, giving myself even more chances to draw into the Pharaonic Sarcophagus. Two triple tactics talent, I bumped down the number of interrupted kaiju slumbers in this deck list to like one since I have fewer kaijus now, and as for some of the going second cards, like Change of Heart, I've removed those and put the Lightning Storms in the sideboard. So I have, like, yeah, fewer going second cards in this deck list now. So yeah, basically one thing that really always bugged me about running Grand Macho TK is that deck usually just flounders hard when it's forced to go first. Even if you get an opportunity to side Still, we have a really good chance of just floundering hard when you have to go first. And then, three there can be only one, since 
we're still running monsters. Many monsters of very different types. So we have a spellcaster, a beast, beast warrior, wing beast, sea serpents, machines, insect, all the kaijus don't share any monster types with any of the other monsters in the deck. Insect, aqua, dinosaur. Yeah, a lot of monster types being represented here. So we should be able to play around. We should be able to play fine under this. And if the opponent's like heavily reliant on one monster type and they can't out this, they basically can't play. So as I already mentioned, this is the card to just let you fill up your graveyard with these new Horus monsters. Send one card from your hand to the graveyard is cost, but if you have a Horus monster, you might as well just send it since you can revive it back anyways. You could just like go and turn one Horus monster in your hand with the sarcophagus into like an easy rank eight. Send it, then send a different Horus from your deck to your graveyard, then just revive both of these with the sarcophagus, and then just go into one of your many rank eights. Canopic Protector, which I might also maybe opt to buff this on the three. Who knows? Once per chain. Not once per turn, once per chain, when your opponent activates a card or effect, you can special summon one horse monster from your hand or graveyard. That doesn't share a name with something you already summoned off the Canopic Protector this turn. And if this card is sent from the hand or field to the graveyard, such as off of one of these new horse monsters, you can just set it, but it'll be banished when it leaves the field, so... You can still have the Protector on the field, even if you discard it as a cost. So you're technically like not going down a card in that case. <laughs> and then for the side, I don't know if I'll bump this up to three or maybe just forego the kaijus altogether. Lava golems, filling a similar role to the kaijus in the sense to just remove problem monsters that I don't know might be re very resistant to destruction or they might be like they might have target protection, all of the above. They might just have a bunch of negate staple to like one monster. Lava Golem just says like no to that, but obviously like if your opponent has like only one monster, then this just, then this just kind of gets stuck in your hand. Three Ash Blossom, two Drawn Logbird, two Bistial Drew Swarm. I, I don't know, a lot of this still does look like my side deck from my Grand Maju deck lists in the past. A third copy of Triple Attack with Salas. The two Lightning Storms like just got moved to the sideboard and since I have a deck that's actually able to do somewhat decently at going first, Anti-Spell Fragrance. Either would be this or Eradicator Epidemic Virus. Considering I'm pretty sure I shouldn't have too much trouble just getting a Dark Monster with 2,500 or more attack onto the field to activate it. Yeah, for example, if I just get to Imseti, then I'm already set. I have the three copies of each of these, of the two, like, level 8 dangers that have, like, 2,500 more attack as well. I'd say Gizmech, but that actually just misses it by 50 points. Like, quite a few of my rank 8s also can get me there. If I have, like, maybe I'm stuck with, like, monsters that aren't dark. Or have like too low attack. By that, desperately want to just sac sacrifice an Xyz monster. Could technically do that too if I wanted. So as for the extra deck, I'm running the three. The, I'm running the spice, the three deep sea diva, our only normal summon of the, de of the deck. To go into powerhouse level ten synchros like our own Defleur and Chang Ying, and I guess her. I don't know, I think people who have looked at Grand Macho deck list have probably seen a lot of this stuff already. Alright, the OTK package just walk away, call it a day. Lancelot, Zombie Vampire, and this is something I recently added in, because I noticed with this deck it could just easily get into a lot more level 8s. And like, it would be nice to also put those level 8s into your graveyard, if you could just get them all back with Kanopi Protector anyways. So, Coach King Giant Trainer takes three level 8 monsters of material and can just attach all of those monsters to just draw you three more cards and 
also like very good chance you're going to do at least 800 damage to your opponent which can actually come up if you're like in game three and time's about to be called you can just basically steal a win with burn damage off this guy if you really wanted yeah so this deck also has a way to just steal wins in time This is just the backup plan in case I'm maybe stuck with only a deep sea diva. I mean, I could still attack with this and then go into Zeus if I'm desperate. I literally have nothing else I can do. And then this is just like that new synchro, that new Xyz monster from Age of Overlord that's really being hyped up. If your opponent's special summon two or more monsters from the extra deck this turn or the previous turn, this is something that almost always happens, quite frankly. Who doesn't, like, special summon from the extra deck at least twice these days? You can exceed summon this card by using the one monster you control with the highest attack. Any monster, even like, <laughs> even like if I just got stuck with an Ash Blossom, I could just summon this. Even if I, like, just got stuck with an Ash or a Draw Unlock, I could just, no just normal summon it and then just go into this. And then you're locked out of summoning for the rest of the turn if you do that. Then neither player can activate the effects of monster with 3,000 or more attack. Once per turn, you get to attack one material from this card. Return one monster on the field from the hand. Alright, so I think of like a couple of days ago. About three to four days ago, I just took this deck list into unrated. I mean, obviously we're not taking this into rated yet, the cards aren't even out yet in the PCG. So just test the Horus cards before, like, months before they're actually set to come out in the TCG. Here goes nothing, because I'm usually not used to playing a deck that likes to go first. So, what I want to do is just get Pharaonic Sarcophagus as soon as possible. So I'm just hoping that this doesn't get ashed. And then he gets hit with Ash Blossom, so... I'm basically down two cards, he's only down one. If I get Ash, that cry. And that sounds about fair, because... You're going down two cards, and they're only going down one. And though I'm at least able to set this back to my field, but... I'm at that point literally just forced to pass turn. Opening Alpha, and then like another Horus card that I can't move anywhere. I have to just end turn. And then my opponent, who was also like opting to test the new Horus cards alongside Dark World, they were also asking about like exactly how the like sending from hand to graveyard works, and then I have to just clarify that send from hand to graveyard does not equal discard. If a card that triggers, if a card has an effect that triggers from being discarded, if you send it, if you just send it from hand to graveyard, it's not going to trigger. So I have to clear that up. I have to clear that up so like Dark World doesn't. His Dark World cards don't really like work well with. For us, since they're not going to actually go off in the sarcophagus. So, of course, I do what I can with the Kenobi Protector that I managed to set. Though I'm like dead certain that these effects of some of the monsters in the graveyard, I'm dead certain those don't start a chain. I think it would be written like something something colon special summon this card. That would be like the kind of effect that starts a chain. Okay, that just has 3600 attack and defense, right? So I don't really get to activate another like. Kenopic. I don't get to activate Canopic Protector again this turn. So I summon Alpha, of course. I try that first. And then I have to think about which monster I want to remove because if 
depending on like what I remove, I'm gonna have to deal with like two of the other effects of these horse monsters. So this is going to send one of my cards on the field of the graveyard, and then this is going to lock me out of attacking the monsters or targeting the card effects in the turn. To which I chain to Imseti attempting to send the card on field to the graveyard and just put this back on the field. I resummon Alpha. Normal summon Deep Sea Diva. And then I try and see what I can do here. Go for And then I go for Baron. And... I don't remember exactly like what other level 10 Tinker I go for here. I think Cheng Yang? Oh, Ice Change I'm here. I'm thinking maybe Cheng Yang could have just been a better choice. And then I just negate the Emperor and I use up Baron's negate to just get the. Sarcophagus off the field anyways. He just, he just he draws another one. So yeah, you really do want to keep the sarcophagus off the field or find a way to keep the graveyard empty or stop the horse monsters from hitting the graveyard altogether. Otherwise things really get out of control like quickly. Otherwise things just really spiral out of control. And then, yes, I just sort of saw the spot here. So obviously, I side in my three copies of Ash Blossom, knowing, again, my opponent's going to also try to just... If they don't open Sarcophagus, but they open Inseti, they're gonna try and just discard their way into... I'm gonna try and just get use Imseti as a bridge to get the sarcophagus, which I could just Ash Blossom that and then two for one them. Alright, I got unlucky with the Danger Bigfoot activation. So I play Sarcophagus. Yes. And then I already have like three Horus monsters with different names in my graveyard, so I just go and like summon all of them. And go for Coach King Giant Trainer. Okay, why not just send another? I go for Coach Dick King Giant Trainer here, hoping to detach the materials, get them all in the graveyard, and then draw three. Maybe one of those three cards I draw could be one of my two Canopic Protectors. He plays Impermanence. So, if you can, use this Impermanence on the Coach King Giant Trainer. I think that would be a pretty good idea to use that on. Yeah, I think that would be a good. I think that would be a good play. I'm thinking like maybe my opponent is also just running like low on cards. Maybe they're running low on options too. So I decide to ash the dark corridor. Maybe they like don't have much to do themselves. Well, I still detach, like, one material as cost, but I'm not going to draw anything because the effect is negated. So I do revive, and then also revive the monster I detached from Giant Trainer. So I go into, yeah, because I can just overlay this on top of any rank 8, 9, or 10 with any rank 8, 9, or 10 dark with 2 plus materials, and then 7 sins on top of my rank 10 dark, or rank 10 or 11 dark. But I assume I'm actually still locked out of battle phase, because I tried to use the Coach King Giant Trainer effect. I assume that's, like, not necessarily part of the effect. That's the restriction. And then they just scoop. I can't out 7 sins. Again, I have to go first. This deck can at least go first, unlike Grand Macho TK, to some extent. So again, I attempt to just fish for Sarcophagus with Imseti, and it gets ashed. Again, this 
just leaving me with a few options as to what to do on the first turn. And then I do the same to him, also just leaving my opponent with very little, like, very little play, like, past that point. Tries again to just fish for sarcophagus. Apparently forgot they can just also draw one card. Then you can draw one card. They forgot they could just draw like another card after adding the Sarko. I was wondering why they had, had so few cards in their hand. You can send two and then get like two cards back into your hand, assuming the effect does get to resolve. So I chain to Sarcophagus, Kanopi Protector to just at least try and get a monster on my field. Going into Dribblubian, and then I decide to chain. You don't have. I have a Horus monster in my hand that I can opt to summon, and that's what I was trying to do. Can summon from hand. And decides not to play the Imperm to just stop the Protector from going through. So I was asking myself, is he really gonna just summon like Numeron Dragon with 9,000 attack and just attack into Imseti here? It's not gonna be lethal. I'm just like asking myself, really? It's not gonna be lethal damage though. And then typically when you do this Numeron Dragon play, you have basically like almost nothing else like left to work with after that point. Like it's usually like pretty easy to just defeat like someone who went for the Numeron Dragon OTK and just failed to actually OTK. It's usually pretty easy to just like deal with the board after that point. Because if I like remove something else, one of my cards is getting sent to Graveyard. It's almost like the Deep Sea Diva, which then gets hit with the Imperm. So I don't know if I like remember that I can not use Kenobi Protector because Imperm was in the same column. I don't remember if I'm like... Yeah, I can't remember like if I'm not allowed to use that. like 9,000 attack until the end of the opponent's next turn. By the time it gets back to the player or summer, then it's gonna go back down to zero. Lava Golem, literally don't need it in my hand right now. And then I chain... I didn't chain my Kenopic Protector to his Kenopic Protector for some reason. Sarcophagus, to which I'm gonna just negate with Baron de Fleur. He's gonna chain Canopic Protector. So this is Chain Link 2. Instead, he was Chain Link 1. This is Chain Link 3. And then I chain. I'm pretty sure I. I didn't. I could have. My Canopic Protector. <laughs> just like one of my other monsters back on the field. So in response, he chains Canopic Protector to my trade, and then I chain my copy of Con Canopic Protector to his copy of Canopic Protector for us to each summon a horse monster back in the graveyard. We're just gonna go with the ones with the highest attack because it makes sense. And then I'm thinking if I want to just use up a Kaiju just to get rid of his monster and then just make sure I still have one of mine on board because I'm low on life points. And then I have to remind them that summoning a kaiju won't start a chain, so this can't be used. Just to like, still have a monster on my board. 
I just like to ask the foolish burial. To which he chains to my Ash, Canopic Protector. To which I chain to his Canopic Protector, my Canopic Protector. And then I can go for a rank 8 play here, except... Actually, no, never mind, it says turn. What am I saying? It says turn. I can't go for a rank 8 play here. And then... I draw it. And then I try to go for a rank 8 play. I try to summon Bigfoot to my field. Well, I guess no matter what, this activation of his protector lets me chain mine to still get a level 8 on board. And then Bigfoot can pop. He didn't, like, activate it. He didn't activate it in response. Once for chain, he could have. I'm pretty sure he could have just played it again. And I chained mine in response to his Mseti, before it gets taken off the field, to summon this thing that was sitting in my hand. I didn't have any more horses in my graveyard, so I just summoned the one out of my hand. And I'm thinking, okay, which... What am I gonna go into here? Which rank 8? to just get rid of his monster. And then just go into like, Zeus very easily with four materials. I opted for Landfall to attack directly and just remove his monster. Okay, if he's gonna just have only one card in his hand. And then I just get like a four material Zeus, then I think we're gonna be in a, like, a seriously a game winning position here. I wonder if that was the- I do really still kind of wonder if that was the best play, though. Yeah. But we're at a point where Zeus is just basically dominating the board unless I get tense or two. To which he's basically out of place, and then Zeus just wipes the board one last time, so I get attacked again. So my overall thoughts with this archetype is it good, but there's definitely some huge choke points that can really throw the deck off for what I've seen. And it didn't really take me long to just realize this deck has some pretty major choke points. I mean, yeah, you can always just run, like, potentially up to three Pot of Prosperity, assuming that doesn't get, like, limited or limited in some fashion in a future ban list. I mean, we're just assuming that Pot of Prosperity stays at 3 by the time these cards actually come out of the TCG, but nothing is set in stone. We're gonna get one and maybe even, like, two bandless updates before these cards, like, come out. So, like, this iteration of the deck without Pot of Prosperity, which could also just be used to easily get to Sarcophagus. A choke point is that if you're stuck with Imseti and you desperately need to get to a Pharaonic Sarcophagus, you have to send two cards from your hand to Graveyard as cost, and then your opponent could just negate the effect pretty easily with Ash Blossom, leaving you down two cards, with them only going down a single card. Could potentially, if you really had a bad hand, just like end your turn outright just from one Ash Blossom activation. I think that what might really end up holding this deck back is just if it really just can't bounce back after getting hit by an Ash Blossom. And then like another good disruption against a deck that wants to go for... Okay, I can't show you Push King Giant Trainer in here. Yeah, if it wants to go for a Coach King Giant Trainer then this could be negated with something like Infinite Impermanence, or I'm pretty sure Effect Veiler also works to just stop this thing from actually getting the effects off. You can also just like make sure like the horse monsters never even get to hit the graveyard in the first place. And you also do want to like be able to hit the back row as well, cards like Sarcophagus and Canopic Protector. If you just banish them like all face down, basically then they won't be able to like revive these monsters later because they'll be banished face down, evenly matched, assuming it doesn't just get, like, get negated. 
if they can't negate this, but... I don't know, I have like an iteration of the horse deck that's playing Baron the Fleur. So it has like a means of getting to a negate if I can draw like DTD, let's say, and then... Shouldn't be too hard to get to at least one level 8 with a deck list like this. Yeah, depending on like exactly how the horse deck ends up like being built. This could either be like a really good answer to, to it, or it just gets like negated. I mean, I still saw a frog from what I've seen, like, there's definitely like a lot of potential for this deck, especially having also the ability to pretty easily play and also play around their Chameleon 1. Arguably one of the more powerful floodgates in the game in 2023. Yeah, because this can just... Yeah, I forgot to mention. I didn't even mention that you can use the effect of Pharaonic Sarcophagus up to four times per turn. Making it, yes, yeah, really easy to just load up the graveyard with Horus Monsters if, say, you have the cards in hand to discard to do so. You're only really actually limited by the number of cards in your hand. Not so much like the number of times per turn you can use this realistically most of the time. These two, like this continuous spell and this continuous trap, just pretty ridiculously powerful if you ask me. Especially the once per chain part on Kenobi Protector, so you can just revive multiple monsters on a turn. <laughs> yeah, it's just something like kind of messed up about reviving multiple monsters in the same turn. <laughs> we all have like effects that can go off if any of them like leave the field later. <laughs> Something kind of messed up about that, not gonna lie. Yeah, still, like, hand traps exist, like Ash Blossom. And then, of course, there are also just still plenty of ways to, like, prevent cards from hitting the graveyard or being special summoned from the graveyard. Yeah, I'm pretty sure, like... I'm guessing Dimension Shifter still might be at 3 by the time these cards come out in the TCG, which... Yeah, if, a deck is, if this deck ends up being super alive on its graveyard, then Dimension Shifter can just literally lock them out of a turn. And then, of course, we have, like, Macrocosmos and Dimensional Fisher in 3, if, let's just say, like, someone else is playing a deck that can accommodate those, to also just lock you out of your graveyard. Yeah, this card... Now I'm just like naming as many counters to this new Horus deck that I can think of off the top of my head. This was like a really big thing when Ashizu Tears were just dominated in the metagame. Wait, okay, card effect that would move a card in the graveyard to a different place, except. Does that technically count as like an effect to. I think, it, I think it might. I have to double check if Necro Valley does work against the, like, because these aren't, like, effects that start chains, so I have to double check if Necro Valley works on the forest cards. I think it might, but I want to double check first. I mean, so overall, I'm still definitely hyped to just... I don't know, play with the cards unless they're prohibitively expensive, when it, in which case they are, I might just wait a year or two to get my hands on them. And then just play them, like, after that point where they're not so expensive anymore, because from what I've come to notice over the past year and a half, is just... When it comes to, like, new chase cards, they tend to be, like, often, like, yeah, some chase cards tend to end up, like, very overpriced in, like, the first six months to a year of the release. And then eventually they get reprinted or restricted on the ban list in one way or another, which causes their value to just, well, not necessarily the original copies of said cards, but causes the overall value of said cards to plummet, thus making them much easier to pick up, which would be a perfect time to just print like more new chase cards to replace the old chase cards. Yeah, so I guess by the time like these finally get like 
if these were to be prohibitively expensive, say like, I don't know, $80 a copy for this, as printed as a secret rare. Let's say if this is like printed at $80 a copy or something in the TCG, and I decided to just wait a year or two for this to finally get an affordable reprint, there would just be like some new chase card to replace this one.